D&D player tried to roll for my alignment and threatened to kill me. This campaign had a large number of players to start, but the most noteworthy ones in this story are myself, Dave, and the DM. I've DM'd more games than I've played, so when an interesting looking 5e campaign in a homebrew world came up from a newer DM on Discord, I hopped at the chance to join. We had a good amount of time to socialize and work on our characters before our first game. I really wanted to do something unique and interesting, so I played a delusional kobold that thought they were a dragon. We did some reflavoring but kept things mechanically the same. So for instance, burning hands came from my mouth. Everyone seemed pretty chill, but there was one person that was far more active on my server than everyone else, Dave. Dave had some kind of job. We never figured out what this was, where they weren't allowed to be on a computer, but could talk and speak out loud, so would frequently ask people to go on voice chat or do calls with them. I know we were going to be speaking to everyone once the game started, but as all of my prior experience was in person, it still made me a bit uncomfortable to do a voice call with someone one-on-one. -on -one. So while I didn't mind chatting with them solo, I kept making excuses for doing a call. Session 1 seemed fine. They did things that kept drawing attention to their character, and would push the DM to allow them to do certain things in their background and backstory that didn't make sense in the DM's homebrew setting. Nothing too major, but stuff like, it says I can sleep at the guard post in the city is part of my background. I'm a guard in this city, and I can sleep there and bring some other people, right? Ah, uh, there's not really any organized military or martial presence in this small town. But it says right here in my background that I can do it, and that sort of repeated until the DM relented. This was the start of a pattern. So after the first session, they messaged me saying, Hey, I have this great magic item I'll be giving myself before the next session. I was a little confused that they were messaging me instead of the DM, but I figured they were just trying to brainstorm before approaching them. Holy cow, Batman. The description of what this magic item could do was two old pages. I crunched some numbers and quickly realized that this magic item was not only capable of keeping the whole party consistently healed, it could one-shot a Tarrasque. I was a bit flabbergasted and pointed out that this was capable of killing as a bonus action the highest published CR monster in the game, and they responded with, yeah, I know. That was one of the things I wanted to do when I built it. Some brief background on the DM's world in the campaign. This was a very low magic setting, and we all started at level 3. In terms of magic items, we've so far come across cantrip spell scrolls, a coin of delving, and a cloak of billowing. Still, I figured maybe they were just unfamiliar or awkward, and they were so eager, so I tried to help them. I thought about what they wanted to do conceptually with their item, and created something that had some level-based scaling and was fairly effective but far more balanced and in line with what someone might have at level 3 in a campaign, and figured with DM approval, and maybe some sort of quest it could be acquirable. I told them that their idea was pretty overpowered, especially for level 3, and suggested the more balanced item to them. The description only took one paragraph. They responded that the item was totally useless, and I didn't hear about them until the next session. This is where things went totally off the rails. Since the DM allowed him to be a guard and bunk with a couple of other party members there, he used this as a quest hook. The head of the guards gave him a quest, and he went to wake up the other party members who stayed with him. Half of us had stayed behind at an inn. The group wanted to do some downtime and shopping and socializing this session, so they were off to the market. The DM asked them, Are you going straight there, or going to the inn first, to get the rest of your party? No, we're going straight there. Are you sure? The rest of the party is still there. Yes, we're going to the market. They bought a Gust spell scroll, but didn't realize that as a fighter, they weren't able to use it. He went to a blacksmith and asked them to make a set of Tonfa. It didn't really make sense in the setting for the blacksmith to have any idea what they were referring to. But Dave kept pushing, and eventually the DM decided that if he can draw up the specifications really well, maybe the smith or another party member proficient in smithing could make it, but that it would be a difficult role, and would have to succeed on multiple checks. He eventually goes back to the tavern and draws up multiple specs, with a string of 17 plus rolls. He then engages in persuasion rolls, another string of 17 plus rolls, to convince other party members to buy those specs and his cantrip scroll, and changes the prices each time. But nobody wants to metagame, so he just scams the party. This takes hours. Some people got chances to interact and play D&D, but the camera was always following them, so to speak. After a skill challenge and an immense amount of 17 plus rolls on Dave's end, they got their tonfa. They proceeded to tell everyone all about the qualities and stats of it. It winds up being this wish list of weapon traits, bonus damage dice, and bonus AC. The DM tries to stop him and tells him that he needs to figure out what its stats and properties are. But Dave insists that he already had this conversation with the DM, that they told him this weapon could have all these properties, 
and that he should stand by his previous conversation. I made up some reason to head directly to the market, something I forgot to mention. Another player complained that I was talking over them in the previous session. I felt bad about this, as this isn't something I want to do to another player. We figured that it was half that I spoke strongly and confidently, conditioned to as part of my job, and them having a quiet microphone. So I tried to be more careful about using my meeting voice, and I turned everyone else's volume down, and turned theirs to the max, and it seemed resolved. The reason I mention this is because I still felt bad, so I wanted to give gifts to all the other party members. I had spent most of the week planning this out, so I needed to get to the market before the end of the session. We essentially just had start and golden equipment, so I had to get creative to make meaningful gifts for the rest of the party, and took up most of my starting equipment and all my starting gold. As Dave heard me doing this, Dave decided to say, Hey everyone, let's plan out how our party will handle finances. Let's leave out OP because they're selfish and greedy. They proceed to plan and vote on how to handle finances. Then proceeded with, Also I have this quest. Let's discuss it and plan on how to proceed with it now before OP gets back. I was pretty livid at this point. I had essentially sat out all session due to his decisions and deliberately excluded from roleplay moments and campaign decisions, etc. I realized that my character also had every reason to be pissed with the information they had available. So as I returned and Dave announced the decisions the party had already made, I challenged them on their behavior over the day. They responded with, Well, you're a greedy dragon, so I know you're bad with money. I don't even need to guess. I just know that you spent all your money at the market. That proves I'm right. In fact, on our next quest, I can just tell the quest giver that you didn't participate and just keep your reward. Then things got weird. I tried to ignore them and went around to the rest of my party, bestowing my gifts to them. They were mostly silly things. A kobold's best attempt to make a scented candle, some tinkerer's tools for the warforged, a chess set for the scholar, etc. Dave interrupted pretty frequently for roles to determine if I was good or evil. It didn't make much sense to me at the time, but now I'm fairly certain they were trying to justify attacking me by proving I'm the opposite alignment of whatever they were. They kept persuading the DM until they finally let them do a series of roles for it, and, lo and behold, more 17-plus roles culminating in a 19. The DM decided he succeeded and asked me to tell him about my backstory and alignment. Here's the thing. I didn't really flesh out their whole backstory yet. I figured I could develop it as the character develops through play. I tried to share what I had come up with so far, but kept being pressed for more before I put my foot down and said, Look, I don't care how well you rolled. You can't read my backstory and my character's inner thoughts with a skill check. DM finally agreed with me and we ended the session. They took off, but some of us stayed on the call to chat. Then Dave says, You should never have tried to stand up to my character. Kobolds are cowardly. You're not playing your character correctly. I glanced at my character sheet and pointed out that I had the kobold legacy trait defiance, which gave me an advantage against being frightened, so I don't think I need to play them cowardly. Then they dropped their next line. You know, I could kill your character anytime I wanted. You wouldn't be able to do anything to stop me. This wasn't one-on-one -on -one or anything either. This was in front of other party members. I laugh it off, but I'm a little uncomfortable. He wasn't very knowledgeable about the game, and I was pretty confident in my tactics and character build, so I wasn't too worried if they just attacked me out of the blue. But they always rolled exceptionally high and could go for my character in their sleep. I was getting worked up, so I made an excuse and logged off. As the week progressed, it looked more and more likely they were going to get an OP magic item and I kind of lost it. I went on a bit of a rant and told both him and the DM I really think it's bad to give him this item because it's very powerful and he's already threatened to kill my character. I realized something at the same time that I suspect is a surprise to zero of you out there. He rolled physical dice. It's not something I had even considered, but suddenly I was incredibly suspicious of him not rolling a below a 17 that session. I started mentally planning contingencies of what preparations I'll be making to protect myself and messaging the DM in order for Dave not to metagame around them. At this point, I had a reality check. What was I even doing? This wasn't fun anymore. I had decided I would probably quit, but also went back and just wrote a heartfelt message about what I felt was antagonistic from him. How it made me feel as a player, and potential steps we could take towards a resolution. Then I muted the server for 24 hours, and tried to mentally prepare myself for telling them that I was no longer interested in continuing. I return and I'm shocked and surprised. A lot had transpired in those 24 hours. I had gotten a couple of messages of support from the DM, and some other party members. Other party members had started sharing their own grievances regarding Dave, and how uncomfortable they were feeling. 
Dave did not respond well to any of this and blamed everyone except for himself. My favorite justification he made, that nobody else seemed to buy, is that he already messaged me and that I was alright with everything. Haha, <laughs> no. Things were getting heated and several people were really upset, and the DM decided to just pull the trigger and kick him. His character became an NPC, and was later discovered dead in a ditch in a following session. If you have a toxic person in your group, bring it up to the DM. Communication goes a long way, especially if they're ruining the game for everyone else in the group. Good riddance, Dave. Please share your main character syndrome stories in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, All Things D&D. Stay tuned for more amazing Dungeons & Dragons content every Tuesday.